Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another interview for The Art of Sherlock Holmes. This time, it's an author interview, and we have on the line uh, Derek Bellinger. So, Derek, where are we talking to you from? I am in Broomfield, Colorado, in, in the United States. And, and is it warm, cold? What's, what's the weather? Uh, it's a little chilly right now. Now it's, it's winter for us. Um, and we're supposed to get some snow this afternoon. Right now it's a little sunny, but it's supposed to change. That's pretty typical of Colorado. Yeah, so we had, we had some sun today here in London, which is, which is better than a normal rain. Um, but I was in Munich uh, with, <laughs> well, for, the, for the World Food Programme uh, Innovation um, uh, session, the boot camp on Friday, and there was still snow on the ground there. So there's, there's plenty of cold to be had here in Europe as well. So what we'll do, Derek, if that's okay with you, we'll dive straight into, into your writing and into your work. And, and maybe you can start by telling us a little sure. bit about um, a study in terror, because this is a fascinating project that we did and published with you as, uh, as the author. Yeah, you know, and, and, and this was, I was so excited. This was the first big project I ever did. Um, and I really wanted to uh, introduce people to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's uh, horror uh, stories, because, you know, he was only really known today for The Lost World and, of course, Sherlock Holmes. Um, and a lot of these stories had been forgotten. Um, interestingly enough, I had put this project together for uh, a different publisher, uh, one that actually ended up closing up shop before the book was released. Um, and then uh, I, you, you were wonderful because I approached you uh, and then you, you took on uh, the project. Um, and one of the things I loved about it was not only did they have the stories, but we also had some scholarship in there, um, some professors. Uh, I wrote a few uh, a piece as well, just looking at why these stories really are uh, important. So uh, absolutely loved uh, that this project was able to get published and find an audience. And um, tell us a little bit about the artwork for the covers, because it was done by your brother, an absolutely fantastic uh, artist, Brian. So he, he created these evocative images, yeah? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I had asked him, you know, would he be willing to do some uh, art for the covers? And he came up with these brilliant images. And I was like, wow, um, I definitely want to use these. Um, you know, and so, you know, we were able to uh, use these particular pieces. Uh, each one um, is, is from a story that the plane is from Horror of the Heights um, and the mummy is from Lot 249. Um, both uh, some, of, some of Doyle's better known uh, horror stories. So I loved, loved the covers. Um, and then, you know, Brian has obviously continued doing cover art uh, now for MX. So it's, it's great. And, and let's get on to the second project, which, which couldn't be more different, I guess, which is... <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I did this project uh, mainly because, you know, when, when I was getting into the, the Doyle and, and Holmes, you know, I, I mentioned it to my daughters and they really did not know uh, who Sherlock Holmes was. Um, and, and I was kind of surprised because, you know, he's one of the most uh, known literary characters in the world, you know, behind maybe Santa Claus and Mickey Mouse is, is Sherlock Holmes. So, but I, I discovered, you know, there's a number of kids who really did not know the character. I wanted to make sure uh, that the character stayed alive um, and, and kind of grew and breathed with the next generation. So uh, I created the McDougal Twins series, about two 10-year-old twin detectives who work with Sherlock Holmes. The kids are definitely the focus of the, the stories. Um, and really enjoyed uh, doing that, kind of based more like on Nancy Drew and the Bobsy Twins idea of like the teen sleuths. In this case, they're um, kid sleuths because they're only 10 years old in these stories. Um, and then kind of also inspired by like the Scooby-Doo cartoon show where kind of like there's a big reveal at the end. And so we kind of use that approach with these as well. So yeah, uh, we'll have another uh, McDougal Twins story uh, in a collection I'm creating called The Irregular Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, which has a lot of kid uh, and young adult submissions in it um, to get. So it's kind of my, my dream in that I've got the next generation now contributing Sherlock Holmes stories. And we're going to continue doing that uh, as well. And that's a fundraiser for the Beacon Society, um, which is the Education Science Society of 
the Baker Street Irregulars. Yeah, we have a couple of, we have a couple of anthologies that, that, that support the society as well. They do some fantastic work. I've got copies of uh, the McDougal Twins books one and two here because uh, book three actually uh, came out from uh, your own publishing imprint, which um, if we go here, so uh, we're really uh, uh, excited to when you told us that you're going to be uh, bringing out um, your own imprint in, in the US. So tell us what inspired you to to start Bellinger Books. You know, I just just um, wanted to do kind of a, a we figured the, the more Sherlock Holmes, the better. Um, and so we kind of want to do our own thing. Brian and I uh, got together and kind of planned out doing uh, Belanger books um, and just kind of some Sherlock Holmes collections that we had always wanted to see um, and, and kind of led the, the way. Um, very proud to say that we also uh, brought back the original, as you can see on the image, uh, Sherlock Holmes stories that were written by August Derleth. Um, they had been out of print for a while, and we worked um, with Arkham Publishing House and the Derleth Estate to bring those out. Um, and then we've, we've had a number of uh, other anthologies that we just kind of come up with. Uh, the one on the uh, the image there, the, the steampunk, is going to be, this is actually kind of a nice spread you've got here, Steve, because it's our, our first book and then our, our most current one. Um, so Beyond Watson was the first uh, collection I came up with where it was uh, different people narrating Sherlock Holmes stories that were not uh, Watson, although there's one story that partially is narrated by Watson. Um, that was kind of the first one, and uh, Brian did the art for that one. And, and then the uh, steampunk one is one I kind of came up with myself where uh, I really wanted to blend Holmes uh, with steampunk. And so we have a two volume collection. That's volume one there. Um, that's gonna come out on Kickstarter on February 19th. So uh, that's kind of wh where we went. Um, and we're gonna just continue on um, with Belanger books. Um, these books actually um, were, we did the paperback edition through Belanger books, but this was published by Endeavor Press originally. Um, and uh, the Peculiar Provenance is my, my best seller. That's, that's sold thousands of copies, actually, as is Primal Man. Um, and that one, I just um, saw that they were looking for novellas and reached out um, to, to this publisher, um, Endeavor, um, also British Press. And um, they did a very, very good job. I love the covers they did uh, for those. And um, those are my longest stories. They're novellas. Um, and uh, they've done a really brilliant job promoting them. So uh, very, very excited about those uh, books. And um, the ebook editions are available from Endeavor Press and the paperback from Bollinger Books. And uh, have you guys, uh, as, as Bellinger, have you, have you started to get into audio? Uh, yes, we, we do have some audio editions of, of our books, um, particularly, well, these, these two, uh, we did the audio editions. Um, Steve White usually does our audio books. Uh, really great reader. Uh, love, love his voice. Um, he's also done um, before Baker Street. He did Beyond Watson. So we've got a few of them. Um, and, and more of them are going to be coming out this year. We're hoping to have all of the Solar Ponds uh, books as audio books for the first time ever uh, this year. That's fantastic, and then um, uh, yeah, definitely a shout out for Steve White. I mean, Steve is Steve has done close to a hundred uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, audio books for us. Uh, we have about a dozen um, uh, narrators, but but Steve's prolific and, and has an amazing range as well. He's done multi-character voices for for us as well. Uh, uh, he's uh, such a such a talented audio guy. Uh, there's a couple more here. You've got yes. um, the the HG Wells connection, and I love uh, particularly love the um, the uh, uh, the artwork on the right hand side as well. The the sign of seven uh, Sherlock Holmes. Tell us a little bit about these two. Yeah, uh, the the uh, Adventures of the Realms of HG Wells uh, was our first in the Realms series. So that's that we have the steampunk one now. Uh, but this one was the first one where I really thought it'd be cool uh, to blend Sherlock Holmes uh, with H.G. Wells. Um, I just thought it could really work uh, well. 
and and it did. Um, the stories in here are excellent stories. Um, the uh, Science Fiction Museum, which just uh, opened up uh, in uh, England, I, I can't remember exactly where, uh, but they they actually uh, contributed some artwork for that cover there, um, and it was just a a great experience, a really fun book. Um, having Holmes deal with like the Invisible Man or or the War of the Worlds, uh, it just worked really well. So it's a really fun co collection. Um, the Sign of Seven actually comes out in July. It's one of my latest ones, um, and it's an, it's another novella. This one's from Titan Press, um, and uh, Martin Rosenstock had approached me to write a, uh, a novella for it. Um, and really, the I really like the cover. Um, very excited to eventually read the anthology and see my fellow authors in there. Um, happy to be in that that list. And that the, the names on the list there are, 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 are fantastic. You've got some serious heavyweights uh, in with you in the book. Uh, Lindsay Fay, Amy Thomas, David Stewart Davis. I mean, this right. is a who's who of um, Sherlock writers. Yeah, I know. I, I'm kind of excited and kind of, kind of, uh, you know, being surrounded by giants is is impressive. Um, and it's it's a the story I wrote was actually a, a a very personal story, and I don't want to give much away about it. But um, you know, when it when it is released, I'll talk talk more about how it was was very personal for me um, to write that story. Uh, and and a definitely big kudos to Martin Rosenstock. He did a brilliant job uh, editing it. Um, and it, it comes out on July 9th. So looking forward to having a copy to hold in my hands. Fantastic. And uh, we should also mention um, that uh, the Solar Ponds, uh, the series. Uh, so uh, tell us a little bit about this. I, I'm particularly keen on this because we ourselves at MX, we're working with David to bring um, uh, the Thorndike stories back. Uh, for the for the first time in their entirety right. over the next two to three years. So, um, so tell us a bit about Solar Ponds. I mean, so Solar Ponds was kind of like one of the first characters based off of uh, Sherlock Holmes, and um, the stories are are brilliant. They're wonderful pieces by August Derleth. Uh, who's probably more known now for uh, publishing H.P. Lovecraft and, and his horror fiction, um, kind of the opposite of Doyle. He's known more for his horror than his mystery. Um, but these these were wonderful um, collections, and there actually was was like a, a Solar Pond Society, the Prod Street Irregulars, just like with the Baker Street Irregulars now, uh, or, con or continue to have them. Uh, but over time, because just the books had gone out of print, uh, sadly, it was kind of fading in popularity. Um, and so uh, David Markham had actually approached us um, and the estate, and we had worked with the, the we approached the August Derleth estate to bring back uh, the original Solar Ponds books uh, in new volumes that would be affordable, because now they're pretty much collector's items before this. Um, and they were wonderful to work with. Um, uh, um, Danielle uh, and, and Damon Derleth uh, were very, very easy to work with. They were very excited that we were interested in bringing the characters back. Um, and so uh, over the course of the last year, uh, we brought back all uh, seven of the original Solar Ponds books. And we also had an eighth book of some of the uncollected or rarities uh, as well. So very, very excited about this. Um, and then we also just recently had uh, the new adventures of Solar Ponds, the first collection ever of um, Solar Pond stories where it was an anthology, different uh, authors contributing stories. Um, and then even before we did the original books, uh, we had published a David, David Markman written a Solar Ponds uh, collection. So we'd also done that too. So very excited to bring Solar Ponds back uh, to uh, a new generation generation uh, and into a bigger audience. Yeah, and uh, uh, some fantastic parallels there. Um, and I know you guys are, are at the cutting edge of publishing in the same way as we are using, you know, print on demand and ebooks and audio. So it's really great to see that you're doing the sure. same uh, in the States as we're doing here from, from London. So we should uh, move on to the art of Sherlock Holmes after all. 
Uh, you are the, the first story in the first edition of, <laughs> of, of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, so the first book is um, West Palm Beach. Um, so we got um, 15 authors and 15 artists from West Palm Beach area. And the idea uh, was conceived in, and is being curated by, both, by Phil Groick. Uh, Phil accomplished uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes novelist in his own right with a, with a couple of fantastic Sherlock Holmes novels uh, that are also in Italian. Um, uh, and Phil picked your story uh, to be the first in the book. Um, uh, I appreciate we've kept everything really secret from you guys and, and none of the, the authors uh, know which uh, uh, artist has, has done their work. Uh, but what, t tell me a little bit about why you wanted your story in there and, and, and what your anticipation is for, the, for, for, for having somebody paint something from one of your stories. Well, this, uh, the story is called The Tale of the First Adventure, and, and I, um, out of all the stories uh, I've submitted to the uh, MX anthologies, um, which, which is a wonderful collection to start with, um, this was the one I've gotten the most fan mail for, and I think a lot of people like it because I wrote it, what if, you know, what was Sherlock Holmes like as a kid in school? Um, and that's kind of where the mystery is. And, and I kind of uh, imagine, and he has to solve a mystery about what, involving one of his friends uh, at school. Um, for the story, uh, I really thought it'd be interesting for someone to take that young Sherlock Holmes um, and, you know, kind of base a piece of artwork on, on that character. Um, I, I loved writing this particular story as a, being a teacher myself. Um, and really kind of getting in the mind of, of what if, you know, Sherlock Holmes was one of my students. And then um, I also um, really was looking at um, some of the writing people had done on, on Holmes as a student in some of like um, the biographies of Holmes that are uh, out there. And so I, I based a lot of my work, my research for how Holmes was in the story on that. Fantastic, and um, I'm, I'm so I feel so guilty that I can't show you this, uh, but this is the first prototype uh, of the book. Uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a big um, hardcover um, uh, of all of the art in here, um, but you are front and center within there, and you're going to get to see it very soon. Um, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing um, all of the art together. Um, and uh, a worldwide uh, uh, launch will be on the 9th of May. Um, so a, a, a high-end uh, gallery called the Anne Norton Sculpture Gardens. All 15 pieces of Sherlock Holmes art will be there. The original art will be there. Um, I'm going to pop out um, uh, 10 days later to go and see the art. And then on the 25th of May, we're going to bring everybody together worldwide um, at Undershore. So, uh, as you, you mentioned it before, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's former home. Um, part of the proceeds right. of the merchandising from this book are going to go to Stepping Stone School, which is based based there. Um, and uh, the book's out there now to, for, for pre-order and all the, all the main uh, bookstores. But I, I can tell you, Derek, you're going to be absolutely blown away by the piece of art that, that has been painted uh, from your story. Um, and, and there is a reason why Phil's put it Put it first in the book. Um, really wonderful to talk to you and um, look forward to getting more of your stories uh, for the future editions because we have the USA um, edition of the Art Sherlock Holmes uh, planned for this fall um, and then uh, next year the global first global edition as well. So I'm sure you've got a few additional short stories that you could send through to us. Yes. Fantastic. So, yes, yes. Yeah. So we, we'll, we'll get some more into, into the future editions as well. It's been wonderful to talk to you and uh, look forward to seeing you uh, the next time I come over to, uh, to the US. Sounds good. Thank you so much for the interview.